Welcome to the waiting room. I'm here, waiting to see God. I was just living my life, going about my business, and in a flash of light, I've ended up here. There's some things I wish I could change, yeah. What do you do in the waiting room? Uh, this. You wait. I'm not sure, but I think I'm waiting for God. Back at home, it's a long weekend. It's Easter time. Is Easter only about bunny rabbits and Easter eggs? Where do rabbits get eggs from and why do they hide them? It seems crazy, it seems shallow, that we would stop the world, stop work, and celebrate artistic eggs and chocolate bunnies. Have we forgotten what it's all about? It seems like a smokescreen for something of real significance. See, Easter for us is a time of sadness and celebration, of defeat and triumph. It's a bittersweet memory of a coveted love story where God meets humanity. When I say Jesus, what do you think? What's your reaction? Some of us are not believers, are uninterested, some are perhaps skeptical, and some of us may, be, may even hate that name. Jesus, does that describe you? Maybe you aren't quite sure what to do with Jesus. Maybe you, like the people even in Jesus' day, have heard his name and the rumors, but have had little time or interest in knowing more. Maybe you recently encountered one of Jesus' followers and the experience has piqued your interest. Or just as likely you've been turned off by a number of overzealous Christians. Maybe you stay away from Jesus because you will be compelled to live a certain way. Maybe you are scared it will change you. Change you into someone you don't want to be or you never thought you would be. Whatever your motivation, I invite you to listen in. Take a chance on this Jesus. I'll leave the question of what to do with Jesus up to you. But let me warn you before you begin, your encounter with Jesus will not allow you any middle ground. Any more than it did the people who met him in person. He not only did extraordinary things, but he made an extraordinary claim. See, the problem we have dates back to the beginning of time. You know, Adam and the apple, right? God said to Adam, you have free reign in this beautiful paradise I've made for you. But you just one thing, don't eat from that tree over there. And the problem is Adam did and his wife Eve. And God said, hey, what's the story, guys? Adam blamed Eve. Adam passed the buck. Now for centuries, this has been the fall of man. Now even today, humanity is plagued with the inability to take responsibility. To not want to be wrong. And all this does is drive the wedge deeper between people we love, the country we live in, and the spirit God who made us. The Bible says, He made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. And our transgressions are offense, crime, sin, wrongdoing, felonies, misdeeds, lawbreaking, indiscretion, mischief, wickedness, bad behavior, error, lapse, fault, and it goes on. But the Bible goes on to say no one is righteous, not even one. And the law given whether from the Bible or any law, is a form of measurement. We use this all the time when we drive the car. There are laws that keep us safe. And the laws to measure how we drive and whether we're driving right or wrong. We use it when we pay our taxes. When we walk down the street, laws are at work. The Bible goes on to say, obviously the law applies to those whom it was given. For its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. 
And in steps Jesus. How can you see how good Jesus is for us if you can't understand how wrong we are? My message is not to point out our wrong. I don't want to do that. I think if we're honest with ourselves, we know our shortcomings. We know we can be dark. We know we can feel lost, hopeless, overcome by life, by the world we live in. One man said the problem with the world is us. This Bible story that we're reading, or this passage of scripture in Ephesians, all of us also lived like this, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, our sinful nature, and following its desires and thoughts. We were by nature deserving of wrath or death. Sin makes a bad version of ourselves. And God makes us the best version we can be. In a world where we are independent people, humanistic thinkers, there is still a part of us that is inherently spiritual. A part we can't fix. If you scratch the surface deep enough, you'll soon realize how spiritual we are. If man made it, man can fix it. But if God made it, God can fix it. Jesus, two centuries ago, died for you and me on a Roman cross, the instrument of torture, cursing, and death. Knowing the beginning from the end, he knew I would be here with you, talking to you right now, sharing his love with you so that you can be made right with God. When we open our heart to God, we don't become Ned Flanders. We don't become strange religious and weird, we start becoming who God called us to be and the war within us is over. The Bible says if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. The coveted love story is one of rescue, hope and promise. It's the promise of a relationship with the creator of the world, God himself. Our scripture reading in Ephesians, it goes on to say, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works that we've done, that we can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So like the Easter eggs that are hidden, they are gifts we want people we love to find. We want them to have joy and a gift that brings life. And so it is with Jesus. Our Bible reading is a reminder of the gift God has given us that is hidden, but now revealed to us. And it's a gift that gives us life. It is God meeting humanity and he wants to meet you if you want to meet him like I'm about to here in the waiting room start with these words Jesus I give you my life Jesus I give you my life it's a it's a, a prayer you meaning you're talking to God of surrender and saying God here I am give you my life just as you gave me your life by dying for me I now give you mine it's not everything you need to know but it's where you start Jesus I give you my life my time in the waiting room is up and I have to go now thank you for letting me talk to you today